Okay, so first of all, for those of you who don't know, the whole reason why there's a co-op debate or a debate about co-op versus solo invasions is because from software cannot implement um, solo invasions in the open world in the first place because they have an issue with the horse the horse does not function properly in multiplayer so they're trying to avoid having a situation where there's multiple player in a world with a horse present so because they don't want to force stuff like dismount which would be incredibly annoying for someone on horseback and it would also uh, or if you like say prevent prevent invasions from happening in the first place if the player is on horseback it would just force you know uh, players that don't want to get invaded to just stay on their horse so it just it just can't work that way like how it's going to play out most likely is that you're go you're going to get co-op only invasions in the open world and for good reasons for what we just mentioned about the horse issue and then i believe in legacy dungeons uh you'll still get like uh single player invasions i think that's what's going to happen but 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 we still like they still didn't like indicate that we were going to get solo invasions in the uh, legacy dungeons and this is how i see it like it's not a simple question like yes or no do you want to have solo invasions it's more like a broad topic to address there's a lot of things that need to be addressed in the first place for solo invasions to be a thing here's what i think though uh groups like you know groups of people because a lot of PVEers seem to be asking that Groups of people that want to opt out of invasion should not be able to do so. So, like right away you're disappointing a lot of people, like the PVEers that do not want to get invaded even with their friend are going to need to step on their boundaries a little bit. Because, and my reason for this is that invaders serve the simple purpose of balancing out the, the massive advantage you get from having other people to help you clear worlds. So while the PvE is incredibly easier once you get multiple people in the same world, invaders serve to really balance out that advantage. And that, that's why I think you can't really have co-op groups not being invadable. I just think it just doesn't work balance-wise. That's really my main premise for this. As far as solo players go, um, I think honestly so solo players should have the choice to be able to be invaded or not. And when I say that, you know, I disappoint people that are pro like PvP. And after when I tell you that offline mode it does exactly that, you're like, oh yeah, then it's fine. But then when I say that, you disappoint uh, the people that don't want to get invaded and want still, you know, want still access to stuff like messages and bloodstain or whatever. Which honestly, I don't really see the big deal. Uh, I would not even mind if they add a, a mode, or not a mode, but an option so that solo players could be, you know, playing offline uh, or could be playing online with the bloodstain and messages. I, it just seems weird to me as a demand that you absolutely don't want to be invaded. You don't want to be offline. You want to be online and have access to the messages and bloodstains. Like, if it's a big deal for some people... I mean, I don't really mind, it doesn't really change anything for me, but I find this request extremely weird because ultimately the offline mode really serves as an opt-out of invasions. It already exists, really. Um, also, solo hosts that want to be invaded because we still have to, have to think about ourselves. Like, most people here will want to be invaded. Like, I don't know about you guys, but for me, when I play Elden Ring, I'll be like, you know trying to invade and get invaded while not having a single summon in my world i'll just want to interact with as many mechanics as possible and make it difficult for me and so i think that players that want to be invaded should be able to be invaded so yeah the like afterward the rest of this like revolves around balance you want to do survival exactly it should still exist i think disabling solo invasions for the open world uh, to prevent or uh, interactions is a no-brainer so you would only really get co-op invasions in the open world no solo invasions in the open world you would never have an issue with the horse that way and it would still please the crowd that won't have to like this or actually not please the crowd like it would still make sense because 
it's not even about crowd like it would not make sense to force people to dismount or to like only be, be invaded only off your horse it's just uh, to me like it just simply does not make sense at all so I, I think it's a good idea to limit um, invasions to co-op to co-op only invadable worlds in the open world because of that then uh, the other important thing and to me that's another extremely important point is to aggress the twinking and griefing issue to the core and it's actually a lot more simple than people might realize like you know oh you have to balance every single weapon and whatnot it's really not that hard like think of think of it that way you add a simple damage gate not a scaling system like take the exact same system that exists in dark souls 3 right and add a damage gate on top of that so which means you know a certain weapon would not be able to do more than X amount of damage to a host. So like fist weapon would not be able to do like say, uh, I don't know, 50% more damage than whatever the host weapon or host straight sword has, whatever. You know what I mean? Like just to keep the dynamic of like an ultra should do more damage than a fist weapon or stuff like that. It's, it's, it's really, really simple to implement. Like... You can even create a, a simple medical, mathematical formula for this, which I have uh, I've done in my Discord. And it's it's very easy, really. It's, it's quite simple. And in the same vein, you would pretty much add a uh, the exact same thing, a defense or resistance gate for armor threshold. So you don't have uh, an invader or a host. Uh, not, not a host, but you don't have an invader that has a di disproportionate amount of resistance in uh in relation to the host so this ultimately would fix twinking what about glass cannon builds that's a very good question with a damage gate though with a damage gate what you do is you don't you don't affect scaling so you would still be able to do you know increase damage on your glass cannon build but you would still not be able to have a like say a fist weapon like the dark hand do more damage than an ultra uh, say the host had an ultra or something like that. Also, this would only be for twinking, right? So this sort of system would not be in place once you reach max upgrade level because let's be real, twinking is not an issue when you reach plus 10 weapons. Like everyone does pretty much the same streamline amount of damage. But that's really only an issue for the first levels. And to be fair, like, look at it this way. If, say, um, the host has a straight sword that does 100 AR, for instance, right? And then the invader has an ultra great sword that does 300 AR. Well, the damage gate could stop like the AR at 250. So if the invader has 300 AR, it would automatically stop at 250. It would only do like 250 max against the host that has 100 AR straight sword. Um, but if the you know if the invader has a I don't know a 200 damage or a 200 AR uh, ultra it would still do 200 AR it just goes as like like the highest it would go would be like 250 because that's what the the gate is set at this really only prevents like disproportionate ridiculous amount of damage to new players that's really what it does Okay, so other than that, like if you would like if you do what I just said there, you're basically fixing twinking altogether, really. Another thing that I feel would be important, and this is already sort of implemented in Dark Souls 3, is to delay PvP interactions until like the new player in Elden Ring has familiarized himself with the new mechanics. So for instance, in Dark Souls 3, for those of you who don't know, you can actually reach the Crucifixion Wood without being invaded once, even while online, if you have never used the Dried Finger or summoned any Phantom. So, in Elden Ring, you can't really do that per area, but you could easily do that since it is open world, right? So, like, the player can go in any direction, so you can't, like, limit the, like, you know, the, uh... You can't like limit areas that the host would not necessarily go to for PvP or not. So you'd have to do this with a sort of in-game clock. So after a certain amount of hours, the uh, the host would then be able to be invaded. So the host would not be able to be invaded like before three hours of gameplay, like you know bosses aside or something like that. 
And obviously, unless you opt in with an item like Dried Finger, that would be the case for everyone. So if you wanted to be invaded from the start, which will happen down the road, you'd simply have to use an item like the Dried Finger. Okay, let's see what else. And yeah, ultimately what this would do is fix the griefing for the, the new players. Like the, the players that play for the very first time, you know, going to... Um, uh, like going through the game in the... Uh, uh, the high, Like say the high wall of Lotric, right? They summon a phantom, then they get invaded by a twink, the twink destroys them. You want to avoid this sort of stuff. So even if they summon a phantom, they should not be able to be invaded unless they use like a dried finger just to prevent the first experience with the pvp to be like to be bad but oh, like already we should have fixed the twinking issue with the point we made earlier another way to protect the uh the new player from having a bad experience with being invaders would be to add a grace period and for like say if you if you die you're a new player you die to an invader or you know any player you die to an, an invader to reduce the frustration and give a chance for a solo host to make progress through the level without constantly being confronted with an enemy player like you should have like a just simply a timer after you die to an invader where you can't be invaded again so it lets you time to like recoup recuperate you know get back your souls stuff like that Another thing I think is important to make people appreciate the invasion PvP aspect and the PvP relationship is not to punish people or give nerfs, but simply to give rewards for PvP interaction. Like right now what you get is covenant items for kills and stuff like that and it's definitely not rewarding when you get like a covenant item or anything really for an online kill. I think what they need to do is they need to reward the invader for successful kills, give an item that's worth it, and then reward the host even more for killing an invader. So make the host be invadable and have a chance when he gets invaded at getting something that is worthwhile. So every time a host gets an invader, he would want to kill the invader because he would get that uh, really cool reward. I think that would go like a long way to incentivize people to appreciate and try the PvP. Another thing that I feel is important, and that's especially true for PC players, is, to, is a proper anti-cheat. But that is very easy for me to say because that's most like, like, this is mostly related to technical, um, this is like a technical sort of uh, challenge for them. It, they would probably do it if it was easy, right? But it's still something they should keep in mind that the cheater problem is very present and it should definitely be addressed. So I think it's worth at least mentioning it. I just don't know like how feasible that is, but I think it's definitely worth mentioning. Ultimately, another important point, I think we all know that the direction uh, from software is going with invading in general is we want to favor the host to win the premise is that the invader should always lose and I think that's a good premise it makes it challenging and makes it enjoyable for both parties both get what they're looking for invaders are looking for a challenge and the PvEers are most likely looking for um you know just to <laughs> they're most likely looking to win you know <laughs> let's be real But, okay, so here's the deal. When you favor the host to win, it is so important to do it the right way. And this is what I think, uh, like, From Software has done wrong in Dark Souls 3. To me, like, this is really the main issue with the Dark Souls 3 invading system, in my opinion. It's how it is not, the gameplay is not consistent from one phantom to the next and what I mean by that if you're a host you have more health than your phantom if you're a host you have more health than the invaders I don't think that should exist because 
the moment you teach a host that he can swing and say trade with an invader and win that trade, it will always have that reflex to go for that trade. Whereas if that same host decides to invade once, it would lose the same exact trade as an invader. You want to keep some consistency to build good habits and teach people to play the right way. So while the host should have advantages, this is not the type of advantage you want to give to the host. You want to keep it streamlined. You want people to keep their stats as, they, as it is no matter which color of phantom they are. But, but that's not without saying that the host should not have advantages. I think uh, the healing items are a no-brainer. Like the healing items should always be limited for invaders. Why? Because they only need to kill the host. The host needs to clear a full entire level. Same as the phantoms. I also think the I also think the phantoms should have the same amount of healing items as the host. Uh, you know, I think basically the phantoms that co-op with the host should be on the same playing field. Phantoms and host should have pretty much the same exact in character equivalent uh, you know if they were to make the same character and for invaders they should have their initial amount of health not a number type bullshit health but their healing should be nerfed because their objective is not as difficult as the other party another thing that should be put in place to favor the host is the mobs okay so this this is a more controversial one but i strongly believe that this is the right way to do it the mobs need to be hostile toward the invader. And why do I say that? I think this is a big part of why uh, host PVEers and P like new players in general find the invasion interaction extremely annoying and aggravating is because a lot of invaders will not engage with the host at all and will simply let the PVE uh, level do the work for them. So what you want to do here is instead of nerfing the invader by chopping down their health bar, you want to challenge the invader by adding an extra challenge to the mix and making the, make them face the PvE. What this would also do and why it would make sense even more than say in Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring is because they are now introducing sneaking mechanics into multiplayer. With the, with the addition of sneaking mechanics, the invaders, the invaders would still be able to sneak up on parties and ambush parties with hosts even if they are uh, enemies to mobs because you now have the ability to sneak around mobs. So if you want to do a successful ambush and hunt host, you would need to successfully sneak around the level just like they would have to. Also, because it's also very possible that an invader might try to ruin a host world, and what I mean by that is just simply kill all the level for them while the host would not necessarily want that. I think that the host needs to have the power to decide if the, the mobs are um, hostile toward the invader or not. So while the Seed of the Giant kind of did that, it should no, like be more like a toggle, toggleable item. Like uh, you activate that to have the enemies be... Uh, hostile toward the invader and if the invader just starts killing everything the host should be able to stop it but once he stops it it should you know stay stopped so it, it's pretty much a choice for the for the host the host should have power over this if they don't want the invader to kill the world fine by him he can just like keep it like that but if he wants the world to be hostile to the invader he should also have this opportunity so at the end of the day, I think everyone needs to put, you know, a bit of wine in their, or a bit of water in their wine, a bit of wine in their water, <laughs> get drunk, no, but like, I think everyone needs to kind of forget about their, like Nirvana, like how they wish Elden Ring was absolutely, and just think about every side, every type of players that want to play, and try to cater toward a, a good middle ground for everyone. So I pretty much gave most of my points here. I'm going to start reading a bit of what you guys said. Okay, so... Let me rewind back a little bit. Uh, funny because you made a videos with almost the same point. Yeah, actually... Uh, I miss... You know... I've watched your vid. I've watched a lot of... Uh, like, I've watched almost all the fucking communities vid. And I've taken points from pretty much everyone. And what I feel would be the right way to do it. And... Yeah, you're, you were spot on with a lot of things, although I just think that there's some details that are so important 
And the... I think solo hosts need to be invadable in Legacy Dungeon. Just because you want players to... Like, especially new players, you want them to be confronted and forced into some PvP situations. You want them to be... Um, to be put in a situation where they have to engage in PvP. Otherwise, you'll never get new players that join the PvP aspect. But you still want to like to to have a farm to to create new PvPers, really. So that that's why ultimately you absolutely need solo invasions, even if it means um, having people that don't necessarily want to be invaded. Which is why we added all these balance things. To make it more enjoyable for the people that are not necessarily looking to PvP in the first place. This is why I think it's a good middle ground. Will you switch to Eldering PvP and leave DS3? Yeah, I would. Uh, let's see here. If you guys have questions, tag me because there's just too many messages in chat. I've watched Dang It Gym 2, but... Again, I still think, like, something that a lot of people don't necessarily agree on, and I've seen the latest Fext for Life vid, and I kind of agree on that. As the dude pretty much told his story on how he got introduced with PvP in the first place, and how he didn't like it, and it was forced, but ultimately down the road, it led him to become an invader and enjoy PvP in the first place. So I think you still need situations where... A PvE -er or a new player would be forced into PvP, um, just because you don't necessarily know what you want until you try it. And for those of you who know what they want, they still always have the option to opt out of it by playing offline. Or if people really care so much about messages and bloodstain, I guess they could add an option to still be online and not be invadable so that you can see messages and bloodstains. I still don't understand that side of thing. I, I always never thought it was a big deal. It's usually the argument when people don't want to get invaded is that it breaks immersion. But then you read the messages like beating a pole to head, all the more wings. You know, that's not immersive. <laughs> Let's be real. And this is the first message I just read like randomly. Yeah, I know you can't invade right now. They're taking feedback. That's why we're having this whole discussion. 